Good evening. A warm welcome to one and all virtually present here. Myself, Rutika C, Link representative and volunteer of IEEE SB LBS CEK. The capacity to learn is a gift. The ability to learn is a skill and the willingness to learn is a choice. We should always choose to stay upgraded. From this perspective, IEEE Malabar subsection in association with IEEE Malabar Hub and IEEE SB LBS College of Engineering, Kasaragod, very delightedly announces the next webinar, webinar three of the bi-weekly webinar series being conducted on the topic, advances in machine learning and research issues in connection with facial emotion recognition. The world is full of diamonds and gems and we are having few such important personalities today with us to build this event. With this note, I would like to give my heartiest welcome to our resource person, Dr. Smidamul MB, Associate Professor and Head, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, LBS College of Engineering, Kasaragod, and Program Coordinator, Professor Sabik, Chair of IEEE Malabar Subsection, and volunteers of IEEE SB, LBS CEK, and all my dear fellow participants. Before venturing into our program, I take this opportunity to introduce our distinguished speaker. Dr. Smidamul MB completed her BTEC from Government Engineering College Trishur and MTech from NIT Suratgal. She was awarded PhD in Data Security from Anna University in 2018. She has several publications in various international journals as well as in reputed national and international conferences. Her research interest includes data security, algorithms, cloud computing, databases, and machine learning. She has more than 20 years of teaching experience. Currently, she is the head computer science department of LBSCEK. With immense pride and pleasure, I invite you, ma'am, to enlighten us. Ma'am, please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ritika, for uh nice introduction and very good evening to all the audience present here and uh, first of all let me thank the coordinators of IEEE chapters especially Renzi sir for giving me this wonderful opportunity to share a few knowledge associated with the topic mentioned we will be uh, just it's more uh, rather than a one one side oriented lecture. I would like to have interactions in between and I will be trying my level best to include and discuss the research issues associated with facial emotion recognition. And why this, uh, let us think, why this facial emotion recognition is important? Why we are talking so much about facial emotion recognition nowadays? Is it a very old topic? People will be having doubts like that. But I know that all of you have heard about affective computing. And this affective computing will be giving you an idea or uh, it is actually a very, very important and upcoming research area. And what is actually an affective computing? And basically, if I say, it associates with developing systems and devices that can recognize, interpret, process, and simulate human affects. It's very, very important concept. And affective computing, actually, in one word, I can tell you that it bridges the gap between humans and machines. Nowadays, we know that we have more computers in our lives. And we want them to be smart, not only simply smart, socially smart, to behave them politely. We never want them to bombard us with unimportant informations. This is something, some kind of common sense thinking and a logical reasoning that will lead the development of systems that analyzes the human emotions and response to the human 
emotions accordingly. This is a very, very important concept. Devices and systems are developing in such a way. It is actually very much used in almost all disciplines of our life. And the case of affective computing, the emotion, emotion is the most important one. How the computer is interacting with a human being, how it is developing its behavior to respond to a human emotion. That actually matters the most. And if we see this affective computing, it's not restricted to computer science and engineering or any branch of engineering. It is purely an interdisciplinary field. It covers various branches of engineering, cognitive science and psychology. And people are nowadays using affective devices in EDR marketing, education, healthcare, and maybe for personal interactions. And here we can see that basically, if we see the sources of affective response, basically we enable or we develop a system to simulate the empathy. A computer should identify the emotion expressed by a human being and behave or respond with to those expressions intelligently. That is what the ultimate aim. And what is the importance of facial emotion recognition in connection with this? If you are thinking of emotion recognition, how we can effectively gather information about in emotion recognition? This is actually gathered by extracting meaningful patterns, patterns of these emotions from the gathered data. This is done basically using machine learning techniques, which adapts different modalities, such as speech recognition, natural language processing, and facial emotion recognition. This is, and one segment of this affective computing or emotion recognition is, one component is facial emotion recognition. Since it is a very huge, very vast area, I will be focusing only on the facial emotion recognition in connection with affective computing and how it helps, how it uh, helps to improve the response, affective computing, affective device response, and also the important aspects. What are the underlying concepts in machine learning to identify facial emotion recognitions. Emotions are actually, we know that if we focus on a facial emotion recognition, it's not restricted to a region. Emotions are universally recognized. That is one important or it's an advantage in this research domain. In all the regions, in all the countries, emotions are universally recognized. And this facial emotion recognition, why it's so important? If you think of facial emotion recognitions, they communicate something, not only our ideas and thoughts, they communicate our emotions also. And emotions, the type of emotions, the number of emotions, and of course, you can think about that. Okay. If you think of emotions, a lot of emotions will come to our mind. And in our Kerala itself, we know that Navarasa. Right, Kadagali is based on Navarasa. Okay, nine emotions are described. And when we consider this emotion recognition, the classical emotion recognition paradigm, what they teach us is like the emotion recognition and the identity, both these are handled by your human brains in parallel and independent. Maybe a slower one. Facial emotion processing is fast, maybe 100 millisecond. And this, this thing is something with our senses. And we can extract our brain parts and maybe neuroimaging. Okay, this is something talking about neuroimaging. And by examining the various parts of uh, brains or maybe analyzing our pulses, 
we can take eeg or our pulses we can sense like that also we can sense our emotions right and this is some pictures it shows how the images will identify your happy fear or neutral faces and this emotions okay if we consider about this neuro emojic recognizing emotions angry faces are detected much rapidly than faces detecting non threatening expressions okay this is one thing we learn from the neuro image and when we consider from our real life experiences we know that young children actually learn from their parents facial expressions okay they can easily identify what is a desirable act and what act is not desirable this is some kind of we can say what is it actually it is a supervised learning maybe the children are performing or uh, it's a kind of supervised learning right it's quite a funny thing and another important thing is how this facial expressions communicate different expressions or different thoughts there are some some kind of observations some kind of important observation is like a fear observational fear will be there okay you just imagine a mother and a child okay mother is seeing a snake and mother's face expresses the fear fear of seeing a snake okay and what actually the child child doesn't know about snake it's an infant right doesn't know about the snake and he don't know like how to react to a snake while seeing a snake but as soon as the child sees the mother's face mother expresses fear and the child also shows a fear response and this is something like showing a fear response to the mother's fear response okay these are also there okay why i am discussing all these things facial expression detection is not so easy there are many challenges if you are going to a real world scenario how challenging is actually the facial emotion or facial expression detections and why we are going for this facial expressions okay that i already told you like it is a form of communication and it actually we need our computers to react to our uh, emotions intelligently they should think of our emotions and the response should be produced with the humans expressions and the important one important idea one important concept in today's lecture is ai and emotion detection and this artificial intelligence approaches we are using i like in the case of extract extracting the meaningful patterns we have lot of modalities we can go for nlps and uh, natural language processing techniques we can go for speech recognition and a fully like a camera equipped system device we can use and the device will be capturing the full visual it will be detecting the facial expression it will be detecting the body languages our gestures and our posture everything can be analyzed to conclude at what is actually the final emotions and these are actually required in healthcare industries and all and one small component is only the facial emotion detection a full effective computing device it's not only depending on facial emotion recognition it depends on various facts it depends actually on various facts and the case of artificial intelligence the motor expressions we will be using the facial detection we can rely on the speech based recognition and also if you are looking for some physical like some uh, responses like pulses our skin response and we can take eegs the brain signals and all these things we can take and we can conclude and emotion detection is a very important and upcoming area and this emotion detection will be developing into a full system by considering various aspects of the emotion detection system and one important aspect is 
facial emotion recognition systems and if we consider a face what are the classes of expressions it can normally express it is joy sadness fear disgust anger neutral we considered only six and if we go for navarasa if you are doing some research deep into this topic we can go for navarasa we can add more uh, reactions and actually if you are relying on this machine learning technique then we should classify them each face will be taking and the expressions emotion will be identifying and classify them into one of the classes joy sadness fear disgust anger neutral or any kind of emotions okay these are some sample pictures just drop pull down to show you illustrate how the facial features can be extra extracted to detect the emotions and i told you that if we, if if you are detecting if you are detecting facial emotion expressions from the frames like this we can just think of what are the challenges we are going to face okay we have lot of challenges if you see the images like this if we have actually we we uh, six we have considered only here six classes of uh, expressions and the actual thing is when a face is given as input it should be classified into one of the six classes and the one fundamental thing we need in machine learning is the data set and in our data set for facial emotion recognition or expression recognition an important challenge is the data set itself if you are having a data set it should be sufficiently balanced okay what is meant by balancing means it should have equal number of frames images for each classes of expressions and in certain cases if you are collecting or getting the data set we can see that many of the cases maybe the face half covered or he is holding a hand on his face and the face is looking down and wearing a sunglass not able to extract the expression from eyes something like that lot of challenges we face here and in this case we can see if if you look at this pictures we can see that we can, one can easily identify what are the important features we are extracting from a face to identify an emotion this picture clearly depicts that it can extract the eye region it can extract the eyebrows the nose the mouth and cheek and many many features easily we can identify what are the patterns what are the patterns we are extracting meaningful patterns we are extracting to get an expression information okay actually we are getting an information from the data set right we are extracting patterns and we are getting information from the data set okay this is what actually this machine learning does and if we focus on this affective computing where we have an important component is facial emotion recognition mit is media lab affective computing is there and they have a system called a human perception ai that is called affectiva and this is a very complex system and what their objective is to make the gap between machines and computer nil machine should behave moreover the same as a human being it should develop instance instantly the expressions and behave and create a logical thinking and behave to their or respond to their respond to the human expressions very intelligently that is what their uh, motto objective and we cannot we actually this domain is purely an interdisciplinary if you are developing a device for this affective computing it actually covers it uses lot of algorithms and one category of algorithm is machine learning algorithms and we know that if you are focusing on a very high accurate results we need we need to process we need to collect a very large or massive data set and they are collecting a massive data set and of course they have uh, collected if you are talking about facial emotion 
their data set consists of it's not publicly available but their data set consists of four more than 4 billion frames and it is collected with 7.5 billion people across 87 countries and now you can imagine how large how big is that data set and a huge data set is basically processed using deep learning deep learning is an exciting research area within machine learning itself we know that machine learning is a branch of artificial intelligence and deep learning is an exciting and important research area within machine learning and this deep learning involves a more complex procedures to extract this pattern so that it can produce more accurate results that is what we can describe what why we are going for deep learning techniques and not only machine learning and when we are using this deep learning techniques the thing is that we need more powerful gpus more powerful machines to process all this massive data set handle this massive data set and we need to extract their patterns right a lot of processing a complicated algorithms involves and what actually people will do they won't go for buying this expensive gpus they can of course depend on the cloud apis and they can use the cloud apis and not only this machine learning they have some embedded devices also that is why i told you pure it is purely an interdisciplinary area a lot of things actually comes and this is not depending on a single model a single deep learning model it actually uses a suit of deep learning models it is something like a packet it's something like a packet it's a suit okay the more appropriate word is suit it is a suit of deep learning techniques it will be using convolutional neural network it will be using rnn and it will be using some other techniques also and that is why it can develop a very very complicated complex systems so that when we interact with a computer the user is not aware of the complexity behind that the system simply behaves behaves according to your emotions it identifies your facial emotion and responds to that emotions a very intelligent interactions a very intelligent interactions it can detect their emotions our cognitive states our behavior our activities and the objects we are using everything the system should identify and to the very basic idea of facial emotion recognition comes with this ekman facial action coding system it's a very fundamental idea it provides a comprehensive analysis and anatomically analysis system for describing various facial movements the various facial components and this facial action coding system if we i have given the reference link if you click on the reference link we can get their muscle movement the action units and everything the very the research of the facial emotion recognition system begin began with this facial action coding system that is fscs and the challenges challenges of course we have seen many challenges and i have cited here very very few and important challenges i know that there are a lot of challenges if each one of you can identify a challenge because it is a very obvious and a real time problem facial emotion recognitions and one important challenge is people express emotions quite differently like if we consider a situation itself to the same situation different people will have different scenario right some people will have a fear to the height if they are standing on a top region they fear they have a fear to look down some people enjoy that that is why i told you different people express their emotions quite differently on different situations this is one important challenge and how the human brains instinctively catch these deviations that is very very important thing right our brain is very like we can't explain how how instinctively they are catching our deviations to this situations 
but what about machines can they also catch this deviations can they also develop this kind of logical reasoning thinking only to an extent not fully right and this is also an important challenge machines are still struggling to follow the logical reasoning and that's why i told you we always when we whenever we are developing on a system for capturing this facial emotion recognition to contribute to, to an effective computing or effect, to generate an effective response then obviously we need a mixture of experts mixture of experts means a lot of a suite of techniques not only a single technique to the basic basics of facial emotion recognition let me tell you some fundamental idea what are the important steps in facial emotion recognition okay so far i have discussed why and where we are actually using this facial emotion recognitions and how it is actually implemented and the important steps are face detection and tracking feature extraction and expression classification quite simple right and this feature extraction is the important component this meaningful extraction it is nothing but the extraction of meaningful patterns and this patterns will help you to identify or classify that expression accurately the for feature exp- extraction is an important step here and if you are not performing that step very accurately obviously we are we can expect some error in the third step that is expression classification this is how the machine learning works and if you are seeing a flow chart it will be something like this face detection feature extraction feature classification and we are getting an output something like we are showing the you are you imagine that you are showing the face of your uh, friend and the machine is telling you that okay he is angry with you okay you are getting a very fast response and to a little deeper we are using if you are considering a simple example facial expression detection using a fuzzy classifier then the algorithm the basic algorithms will be having will be performing the task like image processing then identifying the various parts then feature extraction then expression detection like face region facial component is extracted using fuzzy color filter then we can use a virtual face model and something like a histogram analysis method we will be getting an output not finally the output and if you are using support vector machines support vector machine is very important machine learning technique it's not a deep learning it's a very important machine learning techniques and it will be training the vectors and it will be labeling each vector with its class and a hyperplane according to the function will be drawn between the training vectors and it will be determined the final answer that will be determined through a through the required kernel function and in all this process learning is the important concept and what is in deep learning also in machine learning we know that the word learning comes and what actually learning if you understand how learning has been done then everything is quite easy consider a very simple example okay just consider a handwriting recognition problem to understand how the learning has been performed and our task is recognizing handwritten characters right and we will have a database of handwritten characters and this will be it will have a percentage of characters correctly classified that is actually the performance assume that you are going to be the machine learning algorithm and i am going to tell you the task and i will show you the database also okay there is a database here handwritten characters and you will learn okay these characters represent what okay it is 1 2 3 or a b c d m n or what it actually represent and you are learning some knowledge from the database and finally i ask you to close the book or close the database and i will show you some images and you are identifying okay this is a this is b this is c this is 1 this is 2 and out of this how many characters you are correctly identified 
that will be actually the performance measure. Okay, whenever we are going for machine learning and deep learning, this fundamental concepts is very, very important. Our objective is to improve the performance measure with respect to the training experience. And this is the very, very basic idea of developing or design of a learning system, a machine learning system. We will have a database and a model selection, learning application or testing. Finally, we are testing the model. And here the developing a model and developing a learning phase. These two are very, very important steps. How a model is developed. And for that features are important and how we are going to handle the situation that is also important. And if you are concentrating on feature selection and model selection, this requires some prior knowledge regarding that domain, right? Which particular task you are considering that domain knowledge is a prerequisite for developing an algorithm for feature selection and finally to arrive at a better model, machine learning model. Okay, these are uh, something connected with, again, back to our problem, facial emotion recognition. Okay, for every machine learning thing, we know that we have a pre-processing. I told you that whenever a facial emotion recognition data set comes, it will, the data set itself will have a lot of problems. Okay, one thing is the unbalancing of various classes of emotions. Okay, and another thing is, this uh, face itself may be covered or face itself will have some other portion, something like that. And maybe some body parts will also be coming. It's not along the face, something like that. And all this can be like a data set can be pre-processed to eliminate or remove some disparities or outliers existing in the data set. And we can have a face detection process. The face and non-face part must be separated. As an example, we can use HOG algorithm. Okay, it is a histogram of a histogram oriented gradients. Maybe you heard of that. And the different gradients will be help you to determine the face boundary coordinates. And later we can use this HOG features to train a linear SVM. A linear SVM will be drawing a hyperplane and uh, through determined through the kernel and it will identify the facial region and non-facial region and after cropping a blurring process can be performed before converting the image into lbp image okay these are the processes we are going to do a lot of pre-processing is done okay this is this section will give you an insight into how this is implemented how the facial expression or emotion recognition system is implemented. Okay, in the case of pre-processing, this is done before the training phase. We will have data augmentation, rotation correction, cropping, down sampling. These are the different pre-processing techniques. And if you are going for this is i told in reality to develop a very true effective computing system what we actually need okay just think we need a system okay you are going to develop a system a device that responds fast to your reactions what it actually needs it should learn very deep okay it should learn very much about the human expressions like how the facial expressions are revealed and therefore, we need a massive data set. And this, to extract the spatial temporal features effectively from this massive data set, obviously, we need deep learning techniques. And here, as I told you before, we can have CNN. And we will be actually using a suite of nets. It's not CNN. We can have CNN plus RNN recurrent neural network and CNN is a convolutional neural network. And what it actually basically a CNN does, input image from or frame from a video will be extracted and the CNN will be performing this feature extractions, something like that in the initial phase of CNN will be performing that. And the expression like the meaningful patterns are extracted 
And with the help of this meaningful pattern, extracted patterns, CNN will be performing a classification of that phase into one of the six classes. And it will be finally giving you an output. The mood of the person is happy. Something like this should happen in reality if you are going for implementing a system. And if you are concentrating more on facial emotion recognition by CNN, it will have various stages like data pre-processing as we have already seen, feature extraction, training, and validation. And for that, if you are going into, we can have open CV and Keras function for validation. Initially, the video frame will be stored and it is a video objective and use the LBP cascade classifier to detect the facial region of the interest. The image frame is converted into grayscale, resized and reshaped. And this image is fed into the predictor and the max argument is the output. It's very, very important. The max argument will be the output because it is not a binary classifier. We're considering the six classifier or nine classifier or it is according to your problem definition. It's not, the emotion recognition is not a binary one. Therefore, the mass, max argument will be the output which the system will be giving you or giving maximum it is something like the maximum what is given to which emotion. Okay, the higher one, the higher one will be the answer. Okay. And if somebody is very, very interested in developing a very fundamental system for machine learning, sorry, facial emotion recognition, they can just go through the Kaggle site and it will be having a facial emotion recognition data set FER 2013. And this actually extended CK. CK plus data set is also available. This is giving you some important information regarding the publicly available data set for implementing a facial emotion recognition system. One, the first one is the most important and useful data set that is facial emotion recognition 2013 data set. Okay, it is available in Kaggle. Then we have CK plus data set and Japanese female facial expression data set. These are the three important data sets available. And if we talk about data set FER 2013, it will have certain issues like imbalance. I told you that not equal count of uh, Im images for each expression. Okay, I, I just an example. If sad images are 600, then happy images should also be 600. Sometimes if it contains only 400, then it is called an imbalance. Okay, then occlusion. Okay, some regions are there. Contrast variation. Uh, like some face, some images are very, very dark. Some images are very, very bright. Then eyeglasses. The eyeglasses are wearing, not able to extract the eye expressions. Then outliers. Outliers means not matching with the, not going with the usual scenario. They are moving away from the usual scenario. Because these are the issues. And in the case of this research trends, this research trends where we can apply this expression recognition system, facial expression recognition system and affective computing. And it is answered by another question, where which situation we are not applying it. In fact, in every domain, we are applying this affective computing. Okay, it is image processing, robotics, psychological studies, advertising, digital marketing, job interviews, personalized experts, healthcare, everywhere we are using this. And one example, I can tell you that in the case of okay, what people are doing in online learning, if a teacher is taking a class, teacher sees each student's face and identifies the emotions, okay, almost a 90 percentage, whether the student is interested or not, or whether he is feeling sleepy or not, okay, the student will show some expressions, okay, not only through the face, we will be seeing a whole body, okay, some gestures, okay, we, that will convey the teacher a message that the student is not interested, he's distracted from the class, okay, that time what actually a teacher does, a teacher will be just uh, telling some jokes, okay, the students will laugh, okay, they regain their conscience, okay, they will be again back into the class, something like that. 
teacher can easily identify and teacher will be develop, will be having a logical thinking ability to respond to the students emotions and all okay that is not there when somebody else something like a robot is taking a class there also if a robot should behave exactly like a teacher robot should develop a system a system or a device it should have a system or device to recognize interpret process and simulate human affects that is very very important these four states are very very important they itself give you plenty of opportunities research opportunities develop system and device system in the case of software maybe any any kind of thing develop system and a device that can recognize interpret process and simulate human affects it's very very important these four stages are actually four bigger bigger steps not they are simple recognizing then interpreting then processing then simulating these four steps are the major keystone in this domain that is affective computing and student interest in a class can be easily identified and we can develop a system to help them developing diagnosing of uh, diagnosis of certain diseases robot companions a monitoring a customized personalized expert something like monitoring an individual's health maybe like alzheimer's patients or something like that we can think of that then edr market segment is segmented by software facial recognition speech voice recognition biosensing and services right then end user government healthcare retail entertainment and ge geography and not only by this in video games and everywhere you can see they are actually used chatbots in everywhere we are knowingly or unknowingly we are using one component not a fully developed or evolved system i'm just telling you one component of the system has been used for instance one example i have cited in the slide is disney has been using this technology to determine how audience enjoy its movies that is also one important thing how audience enjoy its movies so that they can improve their business strategies it's very very important thing and one, another domain another business domain is video game companies and i have given certain important uh, deep learning platforms okay this information is obviously available in google also and these are some important applications making cars safer and personalized here one component of this automation is affective computing device a very very interesting domain that's why i told you this is purely an interdisciplinary domain facial emotion detection in interviews that also people are adopting here and if we read articles on affective computing and you can see that some companies they are adopting this facial emotion detection in interviews testing for video games market research lie detector and mood based learning in our learning education system mood based learning is the very very important applications and i have given i believe that i have given some insight into affective computing an upcoming and emerging area very very important research area where everybody from different disciplines can work together to develop a fully evolved system certain certain components are very very efficiently working nowadays but when we talk about a fully evolved system that's not uh, completely existing nowadays it scope for improvement that's what this research domains positive side a lot of scope for improvement and if you are interested in working on the hardware side you can uh, work on that if you are interested in embedded system you can work on that and you can develop with the help of software and all you can develop a device and if you are on the other side artificial intelligence and all you can lot of scope for working in that segment also 
and when we focus on facial emotion recognition the challenges are very very important we are not simply recognizing this facial expression we are joining this expression with other body gestures to develop a fully logical system to react to the human emotions not a negative reaction we mean like a positive reaction just like how a human being will be normally reacting just like that a machine should also react and the ultimate caption for this affective computing is bridge the gap between machine and the human being and one more thing let me remind you that we have a lot of computers we have more computers in our life that's why everybody want the machine to be socially smart behave politely that is what our system behave politely it's not a human being i'm talking about a machine we want a machine to behave politely then be socially smart and if you think of your mobile device itself just assess whether it is socially smart or is it behaving politely just think that whether it is bombarding with unimportant informations whether it is giving you unimportant informations always are you irritated with this unimportant informations something like you just think of that then you will easily understand and identify the beauty of this machines that will be socially smart and behaving very politely to you okay that's what actually we need nowadays and with this i wind up the content delivery and let me move to the question answer sessions i hope that i was audible hello ma'am am i audible ah yes ma'am yes so ma'am my my doubt is uh, you have detected emotions from facial images right yeah image image processing based to facial recognition and you have uh, that in that uh, that algorithm you have cropped the images and downsampled it and uh, you have feature extracted and classification so that cropped images what is the size of that cropped images okay we are actually like it's not uh, uh, regarding the size okay one once we that's what i told you once we store the size of the images okay actually if you store the frame or size of the images if you are focusing on uh, this uh, if the images we are focusing on this it will be having if the data set will be having this is just an example in the real thing what i tell you that if you are focusing on more images we can we can actually go with this machine learning platform something like that this is i just told you an example of machine learning how this facial image uh, facial expressions are detected with the machine learning but when we go for the real systems it's never uh, like implemented with this simple machine learning technique there actually we are uh, we are focusing on directly extracting this patterns only not like we are storing a cropped image and we are working on that it's not like that that means the network is extracting the features yeah okay, so if you think of which, which cnn you are using in that case yeah if we, of course for the deep learning we can have a suite of for the real time uh, in the case of affective domain they are not uh, they are not using a single thing they are actually using a suite of nets okay one example i can tell you they will be using a suite of cnn plus rn Can you explain the role of CNN and RNN for what purpose CNN? Then, or what is the nature of the output of the CNN? Then it is given to RNN, right? 
Pardon, ma'am. The the nature of signal coming after uh, or the features coming from the CNN is maybe given to uh, the RNN. Yeah, but uh, when I told you in the affective computing, they are not using the CNN plus RNN not only for the facial emotion recognition. It is a component only. The face is a component there. When I talk about affective computing, they will be taking the facial expression plus the gestures. That is very, very important. It's a full system. It is a part only we are discussing here, facial emotion recognition. Okay, I am just giving you an idea, slightly deviating from the facial emotion recognition. How this facial emotion recognition contributes to affective computing. Okay, that's what the objective of my talk. When I say it is CNN plus RNN, the one component of this affective, affective computing, one component is the face and another component is uh, this gestures will also be there. One another thing will also be there. Then the third component will be the speech will be there. Then NLP will also be there. When a fully evolved system will be developing, it will be going this much bigger. Then only it will be having a logical thinking ability. It's not only with the face, ma'am. Only one yes, component so only. The, uh, that is, you are, you are, if you are using speech as well, then that input is uh, different domains you are using. And yeah, are different, the... yeah, different domains. In a fully affective system, a different domains will be using, ma'am. It is something like a device will be there, a camera will be there, fully the, uh, the this is captured. And just a small portion only I explained, ma'am. And in the, in the traditional case, suppose yeah. you are uh, you are cropping the images because the, all CNN cannot handle these small images. That's why I'm asking, which is yeah. the model you have used. Yeah, this this only some basic idea how it does. That also I compiled with this affective. Eye. But in affective domain, not only the CN. There will be, it is really a complicated one. And uh, it is th that's what I told you. It is developed the data set for that affective computing will also be very, very huge. It is about uh, maybe more than 4 billion uh, uh, images or video frames and across different peoples, different uh, nature, different color, something like that. It is really a complicated process. Man. And for effective, com effective computing, which toolbox you are using from the deep learning platform? No, not a fully toolbox. It is a like a combined process, ma'am. It's a team of work. One team will be working on that. If you are using a deep learning platforms, we can go for any of this. See, one, one of this uh, thing is Microsoft Cognitive Toolkit is also there. And if you are going with this, this Keras we can have, then this deep learning 4J, we can have TensorFlow and everything. Everything we can work on that. If you are working with uh, for uh, this uh, academic purposes, but when we are focusing on a specific task, obviously I think we need to customize the deep learning models. We we, we need to customize the deep learning models, right, Norma? Okay, thank you. Okay. As for the students also, if they are uh, interested in developing a system and all, something like a device, another challenge is how this affective computing can be implemented on a mobile device. Okay, that is also another challenge. And a lot of research is going into that also, how this affective computing can be implemented on that. And uh, this facial emotion recognition system is 
little bit different from the traditional thing. It's not entirely different, but it is, as I explained, it's a part of affective computing. And here, it's not only the software, some hardware components will also be coming up. It's uh, if we think of affective computing within robotics, it's a different application. If you think of affective computer in personalized applications like uh, monitoring the health of a patient, maybe your mother or fathers or grandparents at a home and uh, personalized application for your car, there the thing is quite different. So participants kindly unmute if there are any queries. Hoping there are no more queries. So let me move on to propose vote of thanks. First of all, I would like to extend my gratitude to Sabik sir, the chair of IEEE Malabar subsection for giving us an opportunity to co-host this event. Webinars of this kind are denoted to the dissemination of new ideas and will help us to keep abreast of the latest developments in the technological arena. Next, I would like to express my sincere thanks to our distinguished speaker, Dr. Smidamol MB, for enriching our knowledge on a very interesting and relevant topic. On behalf of IEEE SB LBSCEK, I thank you, ma'am. I now take this opportunity to thank our SB advisor, Professor Renzi Sam Matthew, and my dear fellow coordinators. The program wouldn't have been a success without the enthusiastic participants. I thank all of them for their patient listening and stimulating interaction. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Renzi, sir. Thank you, Sabik, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Shall I leave, Renzi? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, bro. Um, Kasim, here. Yeah, Kasim, <laughs> sir, is also there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice to see you all. Hi, sir. Yeah, hi. Bye-bye. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Good night. Good night. Good night, sir. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Okay.